I'd like to welcome our guest speaker today. He was here with us last week. It is Reverend Lawrence E. Bergman. He's a well-known speaker around the world. He's traveled to six continents and spoken on three. And he's well known in our Atlanta community as well. We're grateful that he returned. And he's my buddy. <laughs> so we welcome him. Thank you. Join him with me. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure and a privilege to be back here. And I'm looking forward to it. It's always exciting to speak at a church. The heavens opened up and the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove. This is my beloved in whom I am well pleased. And immediately Jesus was driven into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit for 40 days and 40 nights. What a Eureka experience Jesus' baptism was. No wonder he went afar to discern a new direction in life. What in your life has precipitated this kind of a Eureka experience? We all have in a variety of ways. We don't always recognize them, but we must go afar so we can deal with the issues. The revealing word states that baptism is a spiritual cleansing of the mind. The first step in the realization of truth. It is a cleansing, purifying process, preparing an individual to discern spirituality. I discern spiritually that which is good for me, and you do too. Thus clearly it is a foreshadowing of a time of transformation, not just for Jesus, but for all of us. It's a time for recreation. Jesus was driven by the Holy Spirit, not forced, not by choice. Wilderness represents untamed territory, a loss of direction, a separation from worldliness. <clears throat> 40 days, 40 nights, 40, 40? That seems to ring a bell and jogs my memory. 40. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights, and you know that. That's Noah's flood. The drowning out of the evils of the world. 40. Moses fasted for 40 days and 40 nights before God gave him the Ten Commandments. 40. The Israelites wandered for 40 years in the wilderness. 40. King David reigned for 40 years. 40. Jesus was in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights. 40? Do you think all of these things coincidentally occurred exactly 40? It doesn't seem reasonable to my mind However, metaphysically, 40 represents the length of time it takes to have a spiritual change in consciousness. Ah, now that makes a lot more sense. A change in spiritual consciousness is a spiritual recreation. 40 minutes, 40 hours, 40 days, 40 years. It doesn't matter what your 40 is, it's the time you take to transform your spiritual consciousness. Jesus' 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness was a period of transformation from being a carpenter's son to becoming an expression of the Christ consciousness for the rest of his life. How? This was accomplished through prayer, fasting, meditation, it is a recreation of the self, 
we go through this periodically, whether we recognize it or not. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. Lent commemorates the 40 days that Jesus was in the wilderness. Many denominations practice giving something up during Lent. What do they give up? Cigarettes, candy, movies. Good, great. How does that really lead you back to God? In New Thought, we are more apt to suggest, let's give up something or fast from thoughts and behaviors that are no longer aligned with God thoughts. Those that separate us from God or from our authentic self, let's give those things up for our Lent because Lent is an opportunity to change your consciousness. Instead of considering what we might give up to better exhibit my Godness, think what I can take on or take up to promote my Godness being expressed more readily in my life. For I am a child of God and I want to express this in all that I think, all that I say, and all that I do. I am a child of God and so are you, and you, and you, and you. How can I create myself to be more God aligned? We know that as within, so without. We recreate who we choose to be. I create me. If I don't like what I'm finding right now, change me and I'll find something else. I am responsible for me. Now we all know thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. Okay, everyone? Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. And we also know be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Together, thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. I'm sorry. Right. Be ye transformed by the renewal of the mind. Okay. Be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Rethink the perspective you perceive from. If I give up certain foods because I think I'm too fat, then the action is self-defeating because there is no mental change, no recreation of you because your image hasn't changed. Now, I want you to change your perspective. I want you to think taking up a new habit. I might think thin. If I think thin, then that will promote eating more properly, both in content and volume. We take it and divide it in half, say, okay, it was a wonderful meal. This is now, and this part's later. It's all a question of perspective. How do I see it? How do I perceive it? Remember, be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. I release the old ways and thoughts so that I may create an opportunity to take up new thoughts and new practices. This is a rebirth, a renewal, a recreation. Jesus in the wilderness was transformed through fasting, prayer, and meditation. While fasting is customarily thought of in relation to food, we are aware that there are other ways to fast as well. We fast from negative thinking. We fast from thoughts we want to dismiss. Fast, let them go, gone. You too can rethink and recreate your life in your personal wilderness experience just as Jesus did. We think of Jesus as our elder brother and our way shower. 
leading us anew as to how to align our mind with God mind. In 325 CE, the Council of Nicaea concluded that Jesus was wholly human and wholly divine. Aha! But we are too because we are created as children of God. You are totally human and totally divine. How often do you express your divinity? You are a divine child of God. Exhibit that in all that you think, say, and do. I am a spiritual being having a physical incarnation. Aha! I am a spiritual being having a physical incarnation. That may be a new thought to some of you, but think about it. If we are created in the image and likeness of God, we don't all look the same. Consequently, it isn't our body that's created like God. It's our mind, it's our thinking process, the way we create and recreate. I am a child of God and I need to know that. I really need to know it, just not just think it, but be it and exhibit it. That's what's specified in Genesis 1. And if we are to re read these verses from Genesis and believe in the Bible, we are created in God's image. It is springtime. Everything blooms anew in the spring. That means you too. Bloom anew. Life is re-emerging. Blossoms. Buds. Blooms beginning of life from an apparent death all winter long. Not a real death, but it's down there hidden where you don't see it. The crucifixion resurrection story was placed at this time of the year to align with Passover. Hmm. Religious traditions are apt to follow nature and align with the seasons of the year. Shockingly enough, the Passover tradition follows this format as well, as they do in all cultures. We don't think about it. But if you start to analyze the various holidays in, in the religious world, they all conform to nature. The Passover represents deliverance, where life overcomes death. The Passover represents redemption, liberation. It is life reborn, good overcoming evil, love overpowering death it is a triumph of life. That's what Passover is, a triumph of life. The Exodus story suggests eternal spring, everlasting hope. Reading the crucifixion story, it is clear that this does not occur in the spring. Just as Jesus' birth does not occur at the winter solstice. Jesus' birth was placed at December 25th by Pope Julius in 349. Can you imagine? It took 349 years to decide when Jesus was born. But it's a great place. It's a great place in the calendar. After all, it's a rebirthing. Think of it. The sun is at its lowest and begins again. Here, are, here we are with the sun, S-U-N, beginning to emerge, and the S-O-N being birthed. Great, great relationship. During our observation of Lent, we prepare for a personal crucifixion and resurrection as well as that of Jesus. Because Jesus is our elder brother and way shower, we can do all the things he did. He said so more than once. We crucify our thoughts and our actions which no longer serve our needs and wants so that we can recreate ourselves to align 
with God mind, which is my major objective. We crucify as well the thoughts and actions from our past that are no longer appropriate for our needs because we are creating a new future for ourselves. We recreate ourselves over and over and over. How many of you now are where you were a few years ago? Pick your number, five, 10, 20, 40. Are you that same person physically? Are you doing that same thing occupationally? Are you doing that same thing in terms of your family and friends? We grow, we recreate, we have our resurrections, our crucifixions and resurrections. You can only be resurrected if you crucify something and make room for the new. We create an opportunity for our personal resurrection, our personal rebirthing, a new spiritual consciousness, new thoughts that are more aligned with our dreams and aspirations for the future. We grow towards the future. We use this Lenten time for self-examination, self-discipline, self-commitment, introspection, recreation. I recreate me to be the person I choose to be. We experience this transformation through denials and affirmations, through prayer and meditation. In denials, I release all that no longer aligns with my new me that I choose to be. Uh -huh. In denials, I release all parts of me that do not align with the new me that I choose to be. Okay? I close my eyes and I release negative thoughts. I release negative actions from my life. I release them into light and love where they dissolve in the light and the love and float away as if they were attached to a balloon. Or they disintegrate in the burning bowl of my mind. I affirm that my thoughts and my actions align with divine mind, with God mind. This is true now, not in the future sometime, but now. I only have the now to create me. The kingdom of heaven is a state of consciousness. I acknowledge that for me, the kingdom of heaven is here and now. Just as Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is not there or there or there. It is here and now. I experience the kingdom of heaven through prayer and meditation. In prayer, I know my oneness with God. But in meditation, when I'm quiet, my mind is at peace. That is where I experience God's oneness with me. And I live and move and have my being in God mind. In prayer, I set a trap for God. Huh, how can I trap God? <laughs> that doesn't seem reasonable. However, when I set a trap for God, I attune my mind to God mind so that I catch the thoughts of God. I don't catch God. I catch God thoughts. These are divine ideas. I become aware of these divine ideas in abundance everywhere. And I choose the divine ideas that are mine for me to fulfill in my life. Lots of options, lots of choices. Using these divine ideas, I create. I create in my mind, with my mind, the me that I choose to be. 
and the creation in my mind manifests in the physical. What we believe inside comes to be. As within, so without. First in mind, then in action. I am a happy, healthy, radiant child of God together. I am a happy, healthy, radiant child of God. And I need to know this. Not just think it, not just say it. I need to know this in my mind. I exude Godness. I radiate Godness. I am Godness in all that I think, all that I say, and all that I do. With this radiance, I affect and infect all whom I encounter. Like a pebble that's tossed in a pond, I watch the ripples radiate beyond. Remember, if you're in a room and you're smiling, they smile. If you go in grim face like this, people don't really want to be part of it. And they turn around and say, that's not where I want to be. And they go somewhere else. You must, whatever you are inside, you radiate wherever you go and you infect people. So why not be your best? Radiate your Godness. Let them see the light of God through you. You are a child of God. I'd like to read something to you called Our Deepest Fear. This is from what Mandela, what Nelson Mandela used in his 1994 inaugural speech, originally written by Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightening about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. Not just in some of us, but in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. We are liberated from our own fears. Our presence automatically liberates others. So I say, Recreate yourself and let your God light shine. Let it radiate, let it infuse. And I say thank you, God.